Investors, the Federal Reserve just hiked interest rates by another 25 basis points to fight inflation and all I can say is the war is far from over. As a matter of fact, I'm still here sharing that we need to continue to prepare for the worst while planning for the best. How exactly do we do that? Well, value and dividend investing is ideal and for those of you who are new here, I'm Ari, your value and dividend investor on YouTube, sharing my financial journey, as well as the macro market insights, stock ideas, and from time to time, words of wisdom from other masters in the market. As for today, a quick account update followed by a brief economic overview, and then five dividend stocks that are ripe for you to invest into. But before we dive in, I want to ask for your help. If you've been finding my videos to be of value, please tap on that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe as well. It really helps me out in terms of the YouTube algorithm. Now investors, let's dive right in. So where exactly do I personally stand after all the recent market uncertainty? Well, I'm down for my last video, but surprisingly not by too much, just a little over $1,000 coming in at $106,931.85. But by no means does that mean that you should neglect our macros because as I always say, macros matter. And more now than ever as our economic environment only seems to be worsening. And by factoring in macros, no, it doesn't mean timing the market but rather using macro insights to get a feel for where the most discounted dividend stocks will be and how to invest in the coming months ahead. Which leads us right into really the only market moving news that recently came about, which was the Federal Reserve's recent interest rate hike. Turning to the broader economy and monetary policy, inflation remains too high and the labor market continues to be very tight. My colleagues and I understand the hardship that high inflation is causing and we remain strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. The U.S. economy slowed significantly last year, with real GDP rising at a below-trend pace of 0.9%. Committee participants generally expect subdued growth to continue. Yet the labor market remains extremely tight. Job gains have picked up in recent months, with employment rising by an average of 351,000 jobs per month over the last three months. The unemployment rate remained low in February at 3.6 percent. The labor force participation rate has edged up in recent months, and wage growth has shown some signs of easing. However, with job vacancy still very high, labor demand substantially exceeds the supply of available workers. Inflation remains well above our longer-run goal of 2 percent. Inflation has moderated somewhat since the middle of last year, but the strength of these recent readings indicates that inflation pressures continue to run high. The process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go and is likely to be bumpy. At today's meeting, the committee raised the target range for the federal funds rate by a quarter percentage point, bringing the target range to 4 and 3 quarters to 5%. And we are continuing the process of significantly reducing our securities hold. Now, the Federal Reserve was adamant about hiking rates long before the collapse of SVB, Signature, and Credit Suisse. And given the Federal Reserve isn't here playing poker with us, as I always like to say, it was a no-brainer that they were going to follow through with their recent 25 basis point rate hike. This means the terminal rate will now reside at 4.75%, and according to several Federal Reserve officials, we could even see the interest rate pop above 5% sooner than we think. But to ensure you have the whole picture in mind as to why rates are being hiked, you have to know that inflation remains stubbornly high at 6%, which is obviously down from the 7% plus we saw months ago, but far from our 2% inflationary goal, with the employment report depicting an additional 311,000 jobs recently added to the U.S. economy, which really was another key driving factor in the Federal Reserve's recent decision as the labor market is as robust as ever. But what does that really mean for our future? All in all, pain and plenty of it is to come in 2023, potentially even into 2024. Now, we've yet to really see sector by sector layoffs, which I've been sharing are necessary. And until then, I only expect a hawkish Fed and strife for businesses, meaning we need companies that can survive the worst and see through to the entry into a bull market, which leads me to the five dividend stocks that we are about to break down with the first dividend stock being Lowe's, ticker symbol LOW, which I know doesn't need an introduction as it's one of America's largest home improvement retailers 
course, with anything from handyman tools and building supplies to appliances, carpeting, lighting, and anything you would need for renovations. But as we are certainly not in an economic environment for large-scale DIY projects and home improvement, nor a home builder's market, Lowe's has been turning investors' eyes, as it has been down nearly by 12% from this time last year, trading for $189 per share, that PE ratio coming in under 20 at 19.2. But bearing in mind, this is Lowe's, a $115.84 billion market capitalized industry leading home improvement retailer. Dividend investors can invest, and if you're patient enough, you can enjoy the comeback. If we look into smart money moves, we see plenty of hedge funds investing into Lowe's, while analysts foresee a nice chunk of upside, just over 21% worth of it, with the share price rising to $230.30 per share. And until then, Shareholders will enjoy an above sector average dividend with Lowe's dividend yield coming in at 2.08%. Next up, Genuine Parts Company, ticker symbol GPC, which is honestly probably one of the least sexiest investments I'll mention today, which is to say it just frequently flies below the radar, yet it's very instrumental player across industry verticals as it's engaged in the distribution of automotive industrial and electrical replacement parts. Now, it's been in business since 1925 and has only grown with a current market capitalization over $22.9 billion. But in understanding the macros and supply and demand, Genuine Parts Company has felt the pinch of sales pain and therefore we have a stock that is just in the red down on the year trading for $154 per share, the P ratio sitting at 19.6. But we have been seeing hedge funds jump in at the opportunity to invest into Genuine Parts with new positions and other hedge funds continuing to add to their positions. Along with analysts who do in fact foresee a fair amount of upside, about 17.31% worth of it with the share price rising to $181 per share. Now as a shareholder of Genuine Parts Company, there is also an above sector average dividend yield coming in at 2.35%. Moving right along, I want to talk about Amcor, ticker symbol AMCR, and actually take a different approach on this one because it's not exactly your high growth dividend stock opportunity. But before I share why this company should be considered today, you have to know that Amcor plays an integral role in our daily lives and has been in business since 1896 as a global packaging company developing and producing flexible packaging. So think rigid containers, specialty cartons, as well as food, beverage, pharmaceutical, medical device, and personal care containers, which has allowed Amcor to amass a market capitalization over $16.33 billion. Now, as for the stock share price, it really doesn't see too much volatility with the lows around $10 and the highs just around $13 per share. So why mention it? Well, it has a PE ratio coming in at 15.3 to start, but there is more to it. If you have money in the bank that you don't plan on touching, you're probably earning nickels and dimes. But you could safely put that money into Amcor and as the economic turnaround comes about, cash out. Let's just say you have $5,000 in the bank. You can treat Amcor like your new bank, which is not such a bad deal here amidst all the recent news. Anyways, you could buy 454 shares of Amcor, and should it pop above the expected $11.60, you could bank a cool $277 of profit, cash out while also enjoying that dividend of theirs in the meantime with that yield above the sector average at 4.39%. Now next up, my go-to real estate investment trust, Realty Income, ticker symbol O, which is the single largest net lease solutions REIT in the game, primarily invested in single tenant commercial properties with a massive portfolio consisting of over 12,000 properties across all state lines and outside the US as well in Puerto Rico, Spain, and the United Kingdom with a 99% occupancy rate and an abundance of safety with over 12 clients, which has allowed for their $39.23 billion market capitalization, but more recently, Realty Income has struck my attention as it has slid over 6% to a share price below $60 per share. And personally, I really like Realty Income in the low $50 per share range, but heck, it has analysts excited with a $70.03 price target, which is over 17% worth of upside as well as smart money buying into this REIT, which makes sense as we will likely be in a higher inflationary environment for some time and hedge funds doubling down on real estate. Now, as for Realty Income, it's a monthly paying dividend stock opportunity coming in with a dividend yield way above the sector average and reliable as well with a yield of 5.02%. And finally, investors, I'm here to bring VF Corporation, ticker symbol of VFC, back to your attention. For those of you who are not too familiar with VF Corporation, well, they're the brand owners of some of the most popular clothing lines like Vans, the North Face, Timberland, and Supreme to name some. And after 124 years in business, amassed over $8 billion worth of a market capitalization. But they are getting a mention today because their share price has just taken an absolute beating amidst our economic conditions. We're talking about a decline of nearly 60% from this time last year, trading for only $21.60. 
think about that the next you pick up your clothes, you could instead buy the stock and become an owner for less than the money you're actually buying the clothes you're wearing. Not only that, but of course, we see smart money moving in and loading up on shares. Well, even more excitingly, we have the insiders who have been all over this opportunity throughout the last several months, which in my opinion is one of the best signs an investor can see. Now, as for analysts, there is upside forecasted with the share price rising to $29.73, which is over 37% worth of upside. But it is that dividend that presents arguably the best opportunity opportunity with an above average sector yield coming in at 8.38%. Now how's that for a dividend stock opportunity? Anyway, that's a wrap for today. From Lowe's to Genuine Parts Company and Amcor to Realty Income and VF Corporation, the five dividend stocks that you should have your eyes on this week. Do your due diligence on them and invest into them should they make sense for your portfolio. But before you get going, Drop a comment down below to let me know your thoughts on any or all of these dividend stocks. And if I brought you any value today whatsoever, I only ask for your help in letting me know by tapping on the thumbs up button. And if you're really looking to understand how to navigate through the year ahead of us, join me on this journey by subscribing. Now investors, until the next video, I will see you all there.